I'm Brent Adams. I've waited for years for a people's movement to spark, and once it did, I wanted to be front and center with my camera. The top police brass visited the camp. We're all responsible for it, including you. Deputy Chief Steve Clark. Are you all responsible for this too? All of this? I mean, we all are. Yeah, you too. Because you choose to address the issue of houselessness with citations and with brutal force rather than actually providing help. And we're the ones that legislated that law? You're the ones enforcing those laws. Police Chief Kevin Vogel. We can make a viable place for people to live and be safe. We well, need your help. Because the city is tying our hands, the police is tying our hands. How? We don't have the money, we don't have the resources. Oh, yeah, you give people uh, citations and make their lives a lot harder. You protect white people. Oh, you're not reasonable. I know that we need to be out here. The only open to Okay. What is your title? Why are you here? Deputy okay. Chief of Administration. Deputy Chief of Administration. Homeless people had been able to camp and chill out without fear of arrest. You got a couple of days or what? Uh, probably not that long. Not even that long. Huh? Where are they supposed to go? Where are we all coming for? While the camp existed, reports of homeless people sleeping around town declined. Crime along the river levee saw a dramatic decline, and people began to rebuild their lives. As we leave here, where are we supposed to go? Yeah, where are they supposed to go? Where are we supposed to go? We're not allowed on the levee, and we're not allowed in the woods. Can we get medical? We're not allowed on the streets, and we're not allowed downtown. Where are we supposed to go? News cameras were standing at the ready. Um, I was down here last week. Actually, I was down here twice. And I think it's important for me as the police chief to come down and see, see how things are progressing out there. How are they progressing? Has it changed since the last day down there? And police chief Kevin Vogel isn't happy. She appears a little cleaner to me today in terms of the, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't smell the urine or the, uh, or the other things down here like I smelled last week but they have a lot of work to, to do down here. Now, have you heard anything about any sort of a ringworm outbreak <laughs> out here, too? Is there a ringworm warning that's gone out with, to your officers? Jesus I've Christ. heard a uh, rumor. Uh, I, you know, I don't have any, any basis in fact for that, but I have heard a rumor that there's a ringworm outbreak, but nothing to substantiate that. You haven't seen anything like that? I have not. There's a camp. Police telling me today they're concerned about a possible ringworm outbreak. I checked with the uh, county health services agency, and they were unable to confirm. Let's hear that again. Out here too, is there a ringworm warning that's gone out with, to your officers? Heard uh, rumor. Uh, I, you know, I don't have any, any basis in fact for that. That was the first we'd heard of ringworm. Police telling me today they're concerned about a possible ringworm outbreak. We begin to ask the question: How was the news created, and why? Meantime, the real focus today, health concerns at the campsite. Well, in addition to a possible ringworm outbreak, there are problems with human waste and tents taking a toll on the park's grass. And police asked Environmental Health to tour the campsite and list the problems. Santa Cruz County Environmental Health Inspectors, along with police, fire, inspect the occupied Santa Cruz encampment. Santa Cruz police say there are reports of scabies and ringworm outbreaks. These are all things that we asked uh, County Health to come out and take a look at and assess the situation. The inspectors and we'll... will report back to the police department later. Those who are camping here say they're doing the best they can and defend the makeshift camp and its purpose. We don't want people to get sick. We do actually want things to be clean and we're doing the best we can. And the critical thinking part is that that's not perfect. After a visit by county health officers, no tests for scabies or ringworm were ordered or conducted. But the news didn't report this most important part of the story. 
So where did those reports of disease outbreaks come from? They came from Steve Clark himself. This tactic was used at occupations all over the country as a pretext for attacking and shutting down camps. We're really starting to get into the area now where they're impacting safety and they're impacting health and sanitation. The little internet good, this little internet is good. Rappers playing in they six, I hear the neighbors for good. A couple of y'all ain't took a field trip to the hood. Make me a fresh prince, I'm Will Smith to the hood. They ain't saying names, but we not the same. All that money in the bank will change the fact that you ain't. This is a fantastic, fantastic scene. I'm really happy with the... Uh, with the good behavior of everybody and how well they're getting along, keeping the place clean. There's a lot of work to do and everybody pitches in. It's pretty amazing how involved everybody's getting and how well they work together. The news cameras were a familiar sight as occupiers stayed busy keeping a large camp and a 24-hour activist hub running. News cameras peered in. I'm a 12-time election poll worker and someone who's, you know, worked for safe and fair elections in our electoral system that we have currently. And um, I'm a real firm believer in democracy. Democracy is not a spectator sport. I'm clean freak and uh, basic sanitation, helping the Treasury set up accounting and working with the process committee and helping our meetings go more smoothly and, and be more representational, more functional for the General Assembly. Those are different roles I've taken. Um, and Camp Hugger. Uh, the last you know, 24, 48 hours have um, taken its toll a little on my own um, psyche, if you will. Um, the pressure between what's happening with the daily raids and the injunction and what seems to be this um, you know, rapid escalating police and governmental pressure at the same time while we're um, really discovering how to work effectively as a community and have all our voices be heard and have our community stay safe and sane. It's, it's been difficult for me personally the last couple of days, but I'm still here and I'm here a lot because of the people that I'm working with because this is my community and um, I know that they support me. The Sheriff's Department routinely raided the camp before dawn. Deputies carried off protest signs, chairs, and items critical to the infrastructure of the camp. It is difficult to be centered and peaceful when being awoken by officers before dawn. Officers such as Lieutenant personally understood this and seemed to goad the activists to respond. The officers refused to speak with anyone. They slowly ascended the stairs, waiting for some physical attack. They finally entered the glass doors of the courthouse, which hadn't been used even once in the two months of the occupation. They seemed to be taunting the activists through the window. Lieutenant Pursley even seemed to stick his tongue out at me. You want us to break the window, we're not going to do it. You deserve it, though. Surveying the area after the deputies retreated behind glass, it was clear that they had carted off all of the signs and lots of personal belongings. Close to a dozen sheriffs. Uh, came into our occupation on the courthouse steps in a pretty swift order and without saying anything started taking down a couple of our tents and then they dragged off one of our easy ups. Grabbing sleeping bags, grabbing people's personal property, backpacks, my wallet, clothing, um, 
and some of my school stuff actually. They pretty much didn't answer any questions regarding lodging or any of our questions regarding what they're doing. Um, started loading it all up into a truck that pulled up and pretty much were gone as quick as they came. And I was trying to express my concern that it's about to start raining soon. They didn't seem to be too concerned about that at all. Those doors on that side of the courthouse steps for the first time in God knows how long. And left without saying anything. A Fox News reporter was waiting inside at 5.30 a.m. He refused to interview the activists the lieutenant didn't mention taking personal property or taunting the occupiers. Another morning, another sheriff's raid. It is a completely unenforceable law. You're not a citizen right now. You're a These pre-dawn raids are designed to take their toll on the emotional states of the Occupy activists, many of whom must get up and work and go to school. Deputies arrived with twice as many officers as the previous morning, flooding the plaza, a frightening escalation. This part of Occupy Santa Cruz was on county property and wasn't under the city's anti-camping ordinance, which makes the act of sleeping outside of a building illegal. But the county was using an ancient California Civil War era law that forbids lodging. They had yet to define lodging, and it was different from day to day. The occupiers asserted their right to sleep. The deputies scoured over books of ordinances as they searched for laws to enforce against the activists. Deputies began to break down every tent in the upper plaza, and the activists were afraid to claim their tents for fear of being cited with a law that could land them in jail for six months. That's a private domicile you're displaying. There aren't any tents set up on Front Street. The sheriff cleared out county property this weekend. But at San Lorenzo Park, the city side of the demonstration, there are still about 70 tents 